it's uh, Rod Davidson here from Acumentus in Western Australia. Uh, this is part of our COVID-19 update series. And I've got on the line with me today is Denisha Quinlan. She's the CEO of the Chamber of Commerce in Fremantle. And we're going to have a chat regarding how things are going within Fremantle, which is a popular port city uh, within Perth. And uh, I'll hand over to you, Denisha. Thanks so much for the opportunity, Rod. It's um, obviously an interesting and challenging time and there's lots of uncertainty in the market. So we really value the opportunity to hear your thoughts on um, some of the trends within Fremantle. I guess kicking off maybe before we move into the area that's closer to our heart around uh, commercial, having a look at some of the retail stock, we're hearing around the traps that there's still quite a lot of stock available but in terms of a lot of the inner city and urban um, stock within WA, that there's still some issues around um, that kind of missing middle on some of the apartments and be really interested in your thoughts about the future going forward around how we encourage greater residential populations within the city of Fremantle. Look, that's a very good question of how we do encourage uh, people to, uh, you know, uh, embrace that in urban living. Um, what we're sort of finding at the moment is that uh, it, it's interesting. I think WA is going to be a little bit sheltered from some of the impacts that we're probably seeing within Sydney and Melbourne, mainly because we're not quite as reliant on on, on the heavy tourism and the heavy uh, uh, overseas student populations. Mm -hmm. uh, the residential market itself has held up reasonably well, particularly over the last two or three weeks. We've been we've been sitting at uh, sales activity above above 500, and to put that into perspective, the sales activity per week in the last quarter of, uh, ending in December 2019 was about 570. So it did drop down to as low as low 200s, but we're now seeing that it's it sort of recovered relatively well and it's above the same period last year. Uh, so that in itself is, is quite encouraging that people have uh, come back to the market. And from a rental uh, perspective, it's been pretty much the same. The last two weeks have been over a thousand properties rented. We're now uh, well and truly, we're 9% below where we were with stock at the at beginning of the month. And uh, we, we can see that trend uh, continuing. One other factor I'd like to sort of add in there too is that we know there's been a push and we've already seen this happening is that the uh, Eastern States FIFO workers are, are having pressure on them to come and uh, live here permanently. And we've already seen some temporary accommodation, you know, three and six months leases taken to FIFO workers while they're trying to sort out what they're doing. And I think there's going to be some encouragements from from the large uh, companies such as BHPs and um, FMGs and that to encourage that to happen. That's really interesting and we're sort of seeing a little bit that with um, some of our members who are offering um, that short-term accommodation as well. They've been a little bit buffered by the crisis and the lack of visitors to the state um, by having some of those FIFO companies and guys needing to, to be here for a period of time and uh, taking long-term almost um, accommodation options. So it makes sense that that's moving into a residential, which bodes well again for Fremantle because we are that little bit more urban and have a little bit more of that density of stock that hopefully that may be keen on. Yeah. Rod, one of the other things I'd be really interested in your thoughts on is um, and certainly what you've said about retail and residential has kind of mirrored what we're hearing from our agents who are members here at the Chamber. Um, the area, I guess, of concern for Fremantle as well is without um, a great deal of tourists and visitors that some of our retail that have relied on that walking past traffic may struggle. And also some of those office tenants sees that there may be a bit of a trend um, to working from home or more flexible workplaces and some of those um, I guess higher office towers, commercial spaces may be more vacant post this. Is that something that you're seeing? Look, we're certainly seeing that there's a lot of pressure on uh, commercial tenancies and, and, and retail tenancies, particularly over the lockdown period. And we're sort of still not out of that yet. We're only partially opening up and, you know, uh, there's restrictions on how many people can go there, you, you you must eat food and that sort of stuff. So we're certainly nowhere near back to, to any sort of normality. So I think it, it's definitely like uh, anecdotally, I, I've, I've heard anywhere between 25 and 50 percent of commercial tenancies are uh, seeking some form of uh, relief. 
and that's going from you know you know not paying rent for a period of time only paying outgoings to you know paying part rent and that but it, it is there's, there's no formula to it so a lot of it is just you know the willingness of both the uh, owner and the uh, tenant to be able to sit down and um, and get some sort of deal going but looking forward it, it's always worse when this is happening but you know if we open up and we get some some local tourism going and that sort of stuff and our our tourism numbers i've done a bit of research on that of, of who leaves the state and who comes into the state particularly internationally pretty much balance that up so if we if we don't go to the trip to bali for a, for a week and uh and and spend that money and that time locally and i think Fremantle could capture some of that then we may see some normality to come back to the market, but it's probably going to take a good three, six months, and uh, it's going to be pro probably hard over that period of time. Oh, that's really good feedback, and uh, I think it's great that you guys, particularly at Kinenters, have moved a little bit into assisting some of those retail and commercial tenancies um, negotiate their way through what is an unknown period and use some of that data to assist them in the negotiations. So thanks so much for that. No problem at all. And um, and what are you finding on the ground? I know that you're due to have a, a you know a large government tenancy going to your uh, King's uh, development. Can can you sort of touch base on 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 how that's looking? Yeah, and I think that was one of the most heartbreaking parts of uh, of the COVID nineteen impacts for Fremantle is that um, you know over the last gosh decade almost has been such a push to uh, to get the department of communities and get that um civic precinct um within king square developed and literally the day the department of communities were about to move in with their full 1600 workers plus the department of transport here um and so what we've seen is they've still continued with the move it's just been the activation of workers most of them have been working from home through this period so we're just starting to see them trickle back in now um which was a little bit heartbreaking for a lot of our, our retail and it was also hard because we couldn't show off Fremantle in the way we wanted to to welcome those visitors and, and new arrivals when they came. Uh, the civic uh, component of uh, King Square is still being constructed so that won't be finished till the end of the year and I think that will be where we really start to see the benefit of that major activation in the centre of uh, Fremantle. Yeah, well, I think that would be a, a very positive thing having like 1600 workers plus coming 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 back into the centre of Fremantle, that, that will be a good impetus uh, for it. For it this, absolutely. This it takes us from that almost weekend economy to actually having a nine to five economy with um, workers coming through. So we're really looking forward to that. And has there been any sort of uh, sit down or any dialogue with like uh, WA Tourism about, you know, what they've got coming up and whether they're going to showcase any of Fremantle in that? Yeah, WA Tourism have initiated um, quite a strong local campaign around Adventure Awaits. Um, their new, um, I guess, internal um, story and dialogue is around our story and what WA offers. And they've come up with an idea that it's really about that, that spirit of adventure no matter where you are. So we're working quite hard with the Destination Marketing Working Group and a lot of our tourist committee to kind of say, what does that mean for Fremantle and how do we showcase an urban type of adventure and the characters that we have and the barefoot luxury that we have and all of those things. So we're hoping initially to kind of get that really strong focus from Tourism WA, a Destination Marketing Working Group here in Fremantle, to kind of have Fremantle as a local place to have a, a sort of an urban adventure um, for people both regionally, but also, as you mentioned earlier, Rob, locals within the state. That'll be great. Mm. And, uh, and obviously, you know, probably another big hit that's been for the uh, city, which will hopefully turn, turn back pretty soon, is obviously the Notre Dame students have been pretty much gone, gone, gone back to being online. And that was one of the, the great things about uh, the University of Notre Dame is that they're very much, they don't like doing stuff online. They like, like a lot of face to face. So hopefully that'll get back sooner rather than later and we'll, uh, you know, see those students back around the streets. Absolutely. We spoke to uh, Notre Dame actually only yesterday in our Development and Infrastructure Committee and unfortunately, yeah, that, as you said, they've been the, the lifeblood of the uh, historic West End and, and without the students around it certainly is a lot quieter around that um, historic precinct. Uh, word has it, it they will be coming back slowly. Um, they are going to continue with a lot of online and really only come back for tutorials and sort of hands-on workshops in the next 
short term. Um, so fingers crossed um, there is still a push later in the year to bring those students back in on a more regular basis. Uh, one of the things I was just going to touch on, it was interesting what you said about, you know, people working from home, whether we're going to see that real shift away from offices. But I, I believe that, you know, it, it served its purpose and I think people do you know like to have yeah you know, maybe maybe a mix and and you know maybe they'll be able to work a bit more flexible flexibly from home because they've been set up to do it but i think i think the office environment and what that brings from a team's perspective and that you know, ends up being lost i mean it's great being able to do these uh teams and zoom meetings and all these things that we do but at the end of the day i don't think you can beat face to face so I mean, look i i think you know, once we get over this hump, we'll, we'll be back to some sort of normality, and I and I and I think those offices are, are still needed. Those commercial tenancies couldn't agree with you more, and, and we're also hoping that some of our beautiful, high ceilinged, wide open heritage spaces that we have in Fremantle will be a, an option of choice um, post COVID world because we can certainly space out down here. Yeah, exactly. Well, that's, uh, that's been great talking today, Tanisha. I think, you know, we've covered it and hopefully, like I say, I love Fremantle. It's a, it's a great place to uh, go down and hopefully it'll be uh, back open soon for everybody to enjoy. And, uh, you know, we can, uh, if there's anything we can obviously do to uh, help your members and, and, and same thing, if they just need some advice, they're more than welcome to contact us. Thanks so much, Rod. It's really great to have our commenters as a member of the Chamber and we look forward to having you guys down for fish and chips on the harbour soon. Sounds great. Have a great Friday, Denisha. Thanks, Rod. Bye. Ciao.